Hello! In this video I'm going to be going over some of the common mistakes and issues that happen when users are importing um, automatically recurring subscriptions and how you can prevent them. To start, let's go over the subscription CSV format. I've downloaded this sample file here already and I would highly encourage you to do so and use it as a template for your file as well. This will help prevent any issues in the future from happening. All of the required columns that listed are here have to be in your file, otherwise the import won't work. Also, something that we've seen before is if you have a space or two after or before the column header, it'll throw an error sometimes. So just be aware of that. Next, let's go over these fields. First, username. This can also be entered simply as email but only use email if you've enabled in MemberPress the option to force users to use your uh, to use their emails as their username otherwise just keep it as username then enter the username after with no additional text or anything such as quote marks etc next product ID now let me show you where you can find that so if I'm over here in my um, WordPress admin I would come into MemberPress and then memberships and then that ID can be found right here if you're not seeing this click your screen options to enable it and then click apply you're going to want to simply just copy and paste that over or just enter it in so in this case if I wanted to import a subscription to the annual membership test on my site then I would want this ID to be 832 that's pretty simple just the ID exactly how it's showing up in in your site next you've got amount. A common mistake that we see here is if the amount is a, uh, a round number, for example $10, you enter it just like that. But this is wrong. The format, as outlined here, needs to be like this. In other words, with the decimal point. So if you're entering solid numbers like this, be sure to select all the fields that you have, come up into this section here, or if you're not using Excel, you'll have to find a similar section, and just select number as the format type. Then you can see that that updated correctly. Same thing applies with the total column, that same formatting. Next is the subnum. This is a subscription ID as it appears in the payment gateway. So you need to get this from your payment gateway. So here we have examples of Stripe IDs, which uses the customer ID. Okay, You would enter those exactly how they appear in Stripe into your import file. If you need help getting these IDs, our support can't help you with that. You'll need to contact the respective gateway support to download or get those IDs in a file that's easy for you to use. Okay. A uh, PayPal ID looks commonly like this, where the X's are a random string of numbers and letters, or instead of an I, sometimes we see an oh, sometimes we see an S like that. Okay, but again, you just need to make sure that it's exactly what you have in the gateway. Otherwise, the file will import right, but when new transaction information comes, then it simply won't work. Okay, next is the payment method. Let me show you where you can find this. This, as it states here, is the ID as you can find it in the payments tab. So if I come in, in here to my member press options payments tab then this for example would be that ID okay now you would end copy and paste that here period and period type if the documentation is not clear let me explain this period is how many times it happens and period type is uh, what type it is that's happening so in this case this would be billing every month if for example I wanted to bill every three months I would put a three for period and months for period type, meaning that every three months this user will be billed. Similarly, if you wanted to bill every two years, for example, you would enter something like that. If you have confusion on what you should enter for these, just send us an email and we'll help clarify that for you. For status, usually you're going to want to import these as active. Um, if you need to import subscriptions that are canceled or inactive, um, then you can do that, but for the most part, you should just worry about importing ones that say active and this is an optional column by the way it is 
Let's see if I can find it. Status. Okay. It can be active, pending, or canceled. But it will default to active if you leave it blank. Another common mistake that our users run into is with the date fields. Um, Excel and lots of other programs will default to a format similar to this, but please make note of this format. It has to be this, otherwise it just won't work. Okay, So the easiest way to do this in Excel that I'm aware of is to highlight the fields that you need to edit the time for, right click, go down to format cells, and then there will be a pop-up that appears. Scroll down until you find this one or one that looks like it, or you can just in type you can manually enter this in so that it looks like this. Year, year, month, month, day, day, separated by dashes, and then hour, hour, minute, minute, second, second, separated by colons, click OK, and you'll see that those updated correctly. <clears throat> okay, now let's go through some of these optional columns. Trial should be pretty self-explanatory. Trial days, the number of days that that trial will last. Make sure that with these and other fields that you're importing, that you're importing something that's actually supported by MemberPress. Um, for example, you cannot have a trial period with PayPal that's a weird number. It has to be divisible by 7, 30, or 365 so that it can be like clean in terms of days, weeks, or years. Um, so just be careful of that. Trial amount is what the user paid for their trial. Uh, limit cycles will tell you to um, limit how many times the user is billed. So for example, if this were to bill monthly, right, once every month, and I wanted to limit the cycles, I would use that column header and, and maybe put six to have it so the user is only billed once. And then if you're using this one, be sure to also use this one, the limit cycles action, to basically say what happens after that limit is reached. So after the six billions, am I going to have it expire or am I going to give the user lifetime access? And it will default to expire if you don't enter the, if you don't enter this column header at all or if you enter it but then leave it blank, blank for the user. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> prorated trial, you can use that if you need. Most times you won't use this one when importing um, subscriptions. Status, again, I've gone over that. Started at or created at. Created at is more common. Make sure you're following the format. Coupon code um, has to be a coupon that is currently in your database, meaning you haven't deleted it or anything. So just enter that as the column header and then the coupon code exactly as it appears. Um, and then you can add tax information uh, if that applies to this user. And so these are pretty self-explanatory. Again, if you have any questions, let us know on those. And then in terms of the credit card information, <clears throat> if you have it, you can feel free to import it. But just so you know, it's not necessary for it to work properly because that information is stored in your database. Um, and then IP address, again, completely optional. You don't need it. But if you need that information in your uh, database or whatever, then feel free to import it with this subscriptions CSV file. Hope that helps. Um, in the next video, I'll be going over the transaction CSV format.